everybody, John Woolworth for Photo and a Teardrop here. I'm just going to get straight into it today. Our last video was about some of the problems we had with the, the rear hatch and water leakage and some of the rot that we got on the teardrop camper and some of the reasons for that. And today we're going to start repairing it. So I'm just going to kind of give a quick overview of what we're going to do. And then we're going to start going and getting some supplies and taking care of it. All right, so one of the problems we had here is that it's always raining here and it's starting to do that right now. So um, we're going to try to get this done as quickly as possible. But okay, you can see there's a gap here and um, the reason that happened is because of a couple of different things. One is that the, goodness, the struts that hold this up, if you'll notice, I've had to disconnect them. And we're just now going to use them as a prop to hold this door up. All right, so I haven't even, I don't even have the struts hooked up right now, but they were too strong. And so they bent the door and they pushed the screws out. And when you add that with a little bit of rot that happens because, because the hurricane shutter was not long enough, it was cut flush with the end here. And so water was able to get around and get in here. You have to pardon some of this stuff. I put some foam in there just to try to keep some of the water out before I was able to fix it, but we're going to be repairing all that today. Um, you can see water got into the edge here and rotted the end of the door. So we're also going to be taking that apart, replacing that wood underneath here, the cross member here that everything attaches to, rotted on the end. We're going to replace that cross member with something hardwood. Um, I don't know what's in there right now, but we're gonna replace it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get the door off. And we got a few things we need to do in order to make that happen. Um, first of all, we need to disconnect all the wiring. Uh, now mine is color coded, fortunately. So it'll be easy to put back together. If yours is not, you're gonna need to mark your wiring. And I'm just gonna pull these snap connectors apart. Hopefully, there we go. Uh, now, I don't have any special lighting or anything like that, and so it doesn't, the polarity on mine doesn't really matter. So it makes it a little bit simpler. Um, but yours may be a little bit different, so you might want to find that out before you do that. Okay, so I've got the wiring apart. And the next thing I need to do is uh, take out the set screw that holds the hurricane hinge in. And I'll show you that here in a second. On your hurricane hinge, there's going to be a spot where there's a screw that's put in. And you may have one or two, depending on how it was designed. Either, either it's going to be somewhere in the center or maybe two on the ends. And the function of this screw is to keep the door from sliding sideways on the hinge when you don't want it to. So I'm going to take that out. There it is. See if I can do this while I'm looking at the camera too. All right, so I'll just take that, that out. And that will now allow the door to slide sideways on the hinge. And now I can take it off. You going to show that to me? You might have to wait a little bit. Here, come show me. My daughter has found a cicada exoskeleton. It's very exciting stuff. All right, and now that I've seen that, we're gonna take the door off. You ready? Okay, here we go. There it is. All right, so now that that's off, we can get a little bit better look here at some of the rot we've got in the corner. Some of that's foam though, so that's not all rot, but um, we're gonna replace that and make it brand new again. And this time we're gonna seat that board or that cross member into the corner a lot better than it was. And we are also gonna take this door apart. We're gonna put new wood in 
along the edge here. We're actually going to take the whole thing apart and make sure there isn't anything else rotted in there. And then furthermore, we are going to take this uh, wooden shell off of it and we're going to be replacing it with metal. And I'm hoping I have enough left over from when I reskin the trailer to do this door. Otherwise, I'm going to be off to the store to get more of that. All right, so we've got our tarp set up here, and there's my daughter reluctantly, as you can see, giving a sense of scale. And that will keep the rain off while we go and get our supplies. Where are you going? Okay, so I'm back from the store, and I'm going to start removing the hurricane hinge, the old one. And the first thing i got to do is pry the weather strip out of that. Goodness gracious. There's a lot of dirt under there. But that just peels off. Like that. And then I see I got a bunch of star nuts in here that I gotta take out. So I gotta go find a star nut. All right, so I managed to find the right size star nut, and just a matter of taking them out. And we got a lot of a lot of caulk that was doing the work of what should have been a better job, honestly. Yeah, we're going to have to clean all this off and do it properly. Yeah, it's wet right there, you can see. Just get a screwdriver wedged underneath there, and yep, there it starts to come. All right, so just starting to pry some of the old caulk out of here. Um, you know, a good thing to use is butyl tape or um, another thing you can use is the, the black roof, roofing flashing ceiling. That's an, um, like for when you're doing a roof of a house, like a metal roof or, or flashing around a shingled roof. That stuff sticks really well, keeps the water out. But we've got a little too much of everything here right now. So we're just gonna clean it all out and start with fresh when the new hinge goes on here. All right, so we got a screwdriver under here and we're just starting to make some headway here, getting this old hurricane hinge off. And I'll tell you what, it's stuck on here pretty good. There we go. Starting to move. I'm not too worried about damaging the wood underneath it because I'm replacing that with a piece of oak. I'm also not worried about damaging the old hurricane hinge because it's too short, which is the whole problem here in the first place. There it comes, look at that. All right. And you can see the whole thing moving here and that's not supposed to be happening. So I'm gonna have to cut out some rotten wood here as well and uh, replace it with something and that means I'm probably going to have to take some tr this trim off as well. And, and in fact, I know I'm going to have to. Oh, and here it comes. Finally got that off. And there's the hurricane hinge out of there. Not usable again. Now the real problem is going to be getting that board out of here because it's loose on this end where it rotted. But on the other end, still pretty solid and it's under aluminum so I think I might have to take a saber saw and cut that out of there or something like that. Well I'll tell you what even though this wood is rotten it sure needs some coaxing to get it out that's for sure. Woo. Okay so now that I've got that cross member off you can just see how ugly the rot was in there. I'm not looking forward to trying to figure this out, but um, I'm gonna have to patch it with some fresh wood 
and I'm probably going to have to tie it into the good, the good wood that's surrounding it because, once again, on this side is aluminum. And without having to tear that off, which I can't even imagine how that would go about. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just peel off the, the trim here so that I can get to what I need to get to. Um, nice thing is I can see that the wood is still quite good right in here. So it's just, just this area right here. And I can deal with that. I can deal with just a little bit of rot, but I, I was afraid it was going to be down farther. Unfortunately, we're doing really good down here. But I'm going to have to take a, a blade and just cut. Let me show you this here. But I am going to have to take a blade and cut this part out right in here and replace that. All right, so I'm inside my workshop now and uh, we got the door off and I'm going to start taking this apart. And that starts with taking the screws off on the edges here so I can take this panel out and see what kind of damage we got inside it. And that one doesn't even come out because the wood is so rotten. Ouch! So I'm just going to have to pull it. All right, I'm taking off the, taking off the hatch hinge support here because I am not planning on putting these back on again. As I said, the struts that were on there were too strong and I think we're going to use either a spring or just a, a wooden prop this time so we don't have stress on the door constantly. I'm also going to have to remove the lights because they are part of what holds the inside trim together. So they're just held on with a couple of screws. And there it comes. We got a wire and I will have to disconnect that as well. Um, looks like they just wrapped the wires. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip it and then start with a fresh, with a fresh connection when I put it back together again. Got my handy electrical pliers here. You obviously want to save your trim because hopefully that's, that trim should be good again, um, unless it's been bent or, or warped beyond what's reasonable. Okay, so now's the time for the big reveal. I have not lifted up the trim and the inside panel on this door yet. So you all get to find out with me whether we need to um, replace the entire door or whether I, or other I can repair what I've already got. So here we go. Okay. Well, most of it looks pretty good. However, okay, this I knew about. All right, so this I knew about. The inside panel looks pretty good. I'm going to have some repair to do down here as well. And then, what on earth? I can't tell whether that is, you know what, that's mold too, and that's going to have to get scraped out and possibly have that, yeah, that piece of wood is going to have to be replaced as well. And this is the bottom edge of the door where it all runs down and I guess it just soaks up in there. So we're going to be replacing several several struts and spars in here, but it looks like looks like the door itself is savable. And that makes me a lot happier. I was also concerned about what kind of shape that this this plywood here was going to be in because I thought about either stripping that completely off and putting aluminum over the outside of it and I still may do that um, or just overlaying it with aluminum so we're gonna see what happens um, I haven't decided yet on that one all right so a lot of this stuff is just so nasty I can literally just pull it out with my fingers this is not the kind of thing you want to find on the inside but I knew this was coming but as we get into the wood that's a little bit better I'm gonna have to cut it out hammer it out whatever else and then this trim piece on the side here uh, it's riveted in and I'm gonna have to drill those rivets out um, so I can replace that with uh, with something a little better 
So I really wish that when the person who built this trailer had put it together, they put it together with screws, but they didn't. They did it with uh, nails and staples. So I'm finding I'm having to hack the thing apart rather than um, being just able to unscrew parts and take them apart that way. So to the hammer it is. Okay, so I've got some of it apart now. And the amazing thing to me, and I'm not sure how this happened, was that, okay, so this whole piece of wood was rotten, but the, the wooden skin underneath it is in perfectly good shape. It didn't rot at all. And it just makes me wonder what kind of wood they were using for that. But whatever it was, it must have been better stuff than what they, they built the frame out of. So um, good news for me because I don't probably need to replace that substrate underneath. But um, yeah, that's kind of a mystery. All right, so I have managed to get the rotten pieces out of the out of the edge here. Um, I'm going to replace that. The other thing I discovered as I was working on this is that the other spot where we had water ingress was um, around the tail lights, which I can understand that. Um, so those need to be sealed up really well. Okay, so I've got the rotten wood all pulled out. That was quite a chore to get that done. And before I do anything else, I'm going to spray all the affected areas down with a bleach solution to make sure we don't have any live mold spores in there anymore and I don't have to deal with this anymore. And then we're gonna seal it up properly and hopefully get it done right this time. Okay, so I've um, sprayed everything down with bleach that needed to be sprayed and I'm gonna let that stuff dry. It may take a while with the humidity we have here, but um, in the meantime, I'm gonna start cutting some of the replacement wood and I'm going to show you something here. Um, since the door is a curved surface, since the door is a curved surface, you actually don't have as many straight angles as you think you do. Um, so even right here, so I've got a, I've got this piece of wood right here, which is um, the bottom, the bottom spar for the door. And you'll notice it's not a 90 degree angle. There's actually a cut into there. So you need to make sure that everything is cut correctly if you're going to be replacing wood in uh, in this kind of situation. Up to this point I've been working mainly with straight lines so it's been pretty easy just you know this kind of stuff it's it's not that hard to cut um, but now we've got to do the curved piece that goes along this side the main the main thing that shapes the door really and so what I've done is I've clamped I've clamped an ample sized piece of wood here and this is I'm just going to draw my template on there because I do have a rigid metal edge over here that will tell me the shape that this is supposed to be and I'm just going to draw it on my piece of wood with the existing edge piece. So now I've got my basic shape but I need to figure out how tall that needs to be and I, I can go off of the existing uh, the existing cross members here and so this is, you know, this is a, it's a one by two, which really when, uh, when it's milled, it's an inch and a half. So what I need to do is move this board down by an inch and a half exactly, redraw my shape, and then I have my template I can cut from. You can see now, if you can see this, I've got my, my template drawn out. And if you go in and measure, I'm gonna double check this and just make sure that your measurements are exactly where they need to be and I've got an inch and a half all the way across I've already checked it so that's good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and continue with this on and cut longer than I need that way when I put it down here to replace this piece I can cut it off at the ends and have exactly flush where it needs to be all right so I got the piece cut now and I want to dry fit it before I make the second cut just to make sure everything's working correctly. Now make sure that you don't have it reversed when you try to uh, dry fit it because that's not the way the template was made. You need to make sure that it's the same way as when you drew it out. So I've got it in there right now. It looks nice and tight. And um, so now I can go ahead with the second cut and then we'll be able to fit it. Okay, so we've got the piece cut. The ends are still long. As I said, we're gonna cut those off at the end. But I'm gonna drill a couple of pilot holes in the end so that we don't split the wood when we put the new screws in. And we will tie that into the existing framework. 
Okay, drilling the pilot holes. We are, of course, going to paint this before we put it on, too. All right, so we're ready to mark these now. And we're just going to take our pencil and mark it against the frame that we already had. And then we're just going to take it and cut it. And now we should have a perfect fit, theoretically speaking. So we'll just put it right there after the cut. And we have... A perfect fit and we're ready now to paint and then put this back together okay so one of the things I'm gonna do is um, when I looked in the door here when we had all the rot going on one of the things that happened I could see was that when the water got in around the uh, around the tail lights it just sat in there there was nowhere for it to go so I'm actually gonna drill a couple of small drain holes just in case water ever should get in there again I don't want it just sitting there festering for a long period of time doesn't have to be very big, it just needs to be big enough that um, the surface tension will not hold it in there even if it does get water in it. So it needs to be, you know, a good uh, maybe three-eighths of an inch or something like that. At least that's my theory. And I want to have it on the lowest point on the door, which um, since the door is curved this way, it's going to be on the inside slightly. So I will have it towards the, towards the front of the trailer if that makes any sense. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the door flipped back over again. We've got the original wooden painted side exposed again. I'm going to be scraping off some of the old paint here that's chipped. Um, and also, if you can see here, we've got an, this angle iron here that's on there as weather stripping. It's um, designed to keep water from running around the edge of the door. And um, I need to pop this off because I'm going to sheet this door with aluminum. And the aluminum needs to go all the way to the edge of the door here, and I need to be able to put this piece of trim back on top of that then. And since it's riveted, I have to drill it out, and I'm going to put it back on again with uh, sheet metal screws once I am ready to do that. So I'm going to drill these out now, and we can get rid of them. Okay, so I've got the door flipped back over again, and uh, I'm ready to start skinning the door in aluminum. Uh, you know, part of the problem with what we had here was because when you finish a door in just the, the bare wood, um, even with, the, you know, a good coating, like they put uh, marine grade paint on here. Um, I think there's some kind of an epoxy coating or something like that. But the problem is when you, even if you have like, you know, a rock chip hit it or something like that, or a branch hits it, if it puts any kind of a nick in that coating, you're going to get water, water ingress into that and it will start to, to rot. And that's I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. All right, so this, we want to have a clean space to work with while we're doing this. So I'm going to take my aluminum sheet and I'm going to lay it down in the direction. Uh, I want to have the unfinished side facing the outside of the door here because that's going to be our glue side. You, you want to make sure you got the right side showing forward because there's a there's a good painted finish side and then there's kind of a primered side when you get this aluminum. I guess I should back up a little bit and tell you where I got this. Um, I went to I went to a roofing store like a, a a place that puts metal roofs on houses, and they they corrugate and finish the metal right there in the shop. But I just went and bought some of the unfinished material. It's it's got the paint on it and everything. You can buy any different color you want but it has not been corrugated like you were going to put it on a metal roof. So I just bought it in a roll. And uh, this is what I sheeted the rest of my trailer with as well. And I just happened to have just enough left over afterwards to finish this job. Okay, so I've got my aluminum cleaned off. And I'm now going to take my door. <clears throat> lay it on it and you know you can do it this way you can also do it just as as measurements um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp the edges of my aluminum to my door and I'm just going to draw out exactly where everything is going to lie and uh, the nice thing about doing both the inside and the outside of the door at the same time besides being able to see any damage or rot is that you can just draw out your holes as a template right here for your you know your lights and such um, so that you can just cut them out when you need to do that 
It's better to make your holes too small rather than too large. Um, you can always cut off excess, but you can't make the hole smaller again afterwards. Okay, so I got it flipped over now, and you might be wondering why I flipped it over, and it's just because I wanted the metal to be able to lay the way it's going to be laying naturally on the wood here. If you got it upside down, even with the clamps, it's, it, it doesn't lay quite right, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was lined up exactly as it should be, and it's going to fit properly. And uh, I'm just adjusting it just a little bit with a rubber mallet so that it's exactly where it needs to be, and that looks pretty good. The great thing about having a piece of metal that was exactly as wide as the door is that I only have one side I need to cut. And I got a pair of tin snips here. I borrowed these 27 years ago from, uh, from a friend of mine. So Joel, if you want to stop by and pick these up, um, they're here. And it's time to start cutting. And with the tin snips, you want to make sure you're cutting from the, the correct side. There's left-handed and right-handed cutters. And one of the sides that you cut will curl up and the other one will stay straight. So you don't want to warp the metal that you're, you're going to be using on your door. There are electric versions of these too, but I do like to be able to use the handheld ones because they are very precise. You can cut down to the, the fraction of a millimeter where you want this to be. And when you use the electric ones, it cuts off a small strip which is great if you're doing, you know, like bulk stuff, but, um, you know, if you need to be really precise with it, it's better to, to have the handheld one. It takes longer, obviously, but gets a better, better job. All right, so it might be kind of hard to see here, but I've got my, my hole marked out for my tail lights, and, you know, obviously I can't just take the tin snips here and, and poke it through and start cutting, so what I need to do is drill a, a pilot hole and that'll give something for the, uh, the snippers to bite into. It'll give a little bit of a hole so I can start cutting around and then get to the edge. I don't want to drill this hole at the edge here because if I do, it'll, it'll make this so it isn't flat. And we definitely want to have this flat if we want it to seal properly. Okay, and now that I've got that, I've got just enough of a hole to be able to get the snips in there and start cutting. And I'm just going to work my way toward the edge of the hole. Okay, almost there, and then I'm just going to turn my, my cutter. There we go. Okay, so we are at the point now where we've got all the hardware in where it's supposed to be. This is just a dry fit right now. Um, we're not going to mess with the adhesive quite yet, but what we need to do is make sure everything is exactly where it needs to be. This is our new shiny metal, and we've got our lights in place, we've got our hardware where it's going to be, and the next thing we need to do is just start marking out where all of our, oh, losing focus here, we need to start marking out where all of our screw holes are going to be, because we do have trim along the side, and I'm going to take the old trim here, wrong piece and again we want to be able to put some some screws in where it's not going to be seen or at least where there there were screws before and so I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this right here the old trim and you can see the old screw holes there and I'm just gonna I'm gonna tap a, a, a light pilot hole through each of them so that when the time comes to so when the time comes to start putting the adhesive down and finishing everything up. We've got all our holes drilled. We've got everything exactly where it needs to be because once that adhesive goes down, we don't want to have to do anything else. This is the new hurricane hinge here. And this goes on the top of the door. Um, I'm not going to bore you with drilling the holes and all that stuff like that, but this is where this is going to go. And again, the problem we had before was the fact that the old hurricane hinge only came up flush with the edge of the door like that. So water ran around the end of it and into the edging here. So it's actually supposed to come or past the edge of the door a little bit rather than being flush like that. It needs to be out a bit. All right, so as I'm putting this together and fitting all the hardware and everything like that, one of the things that I'm fitting is the new hurricane hinge. And um, I need to 
and I need to place where all the screws are going to go in it. But one of the things to keep in mind is that there is definitely an upside down and a right side up way to put on the hurricane hinge. And you definitely want to look through the instructions and make sure you're doing it the correct way because you don't want to take your door back out and go to put it on to your camper and find out you put it on upside down. And when we get this together, I'm going to want to make sure that everything is sealed up very well in here. Um, especially along the edge when we do our trim here because if any water is going to get underneath here It's not going to be through the aluminum. It's going to be from around the edges, which is where our problem was before I am at the fun part now. You've seen I've changed clothes here, and that is because I'm going to be using our Our DAP sealant and this stuff is black and it gets all over everything and it doesn't come out So if I can't stand to throw it out when I'm done, I'm not wearing it but I'm going to start putting a bead all the way around the outside of this. I'm actually going to do a double bead. So if there's any kind of a break at all, uh, if water gets through one, it won't get through the second one. And um, then I'm going to start putting my aluminum on. And I'm going to also start working. I'm going to press it down. If I, if I had a roller, that'd be great. I don't have a roller. I'm going to do it by hand. But you work from one side to the other, and that way you don't end up with with uh, wrinkles or bubbles or anything like that in your aluminum sheeting or your steel sheeting, whatever you're using. And um, then we're gonna start putting screws back in. Now I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the way to the edge because that's where water gets in is on the edge. And if it, if it ends up squeezing out, um, I will just uh, cut it off once it dries. So we're getting this lined up here and this is where it gets messy because you got to slide this stuff just a little bit, get it exactly where it needs to be, and then start pressing it down. All right, I'm going to make sure all your holes are lined up because you don't really get a second chance at this one. Um, we're going to put the hurricane hinge on here. And that'll be our first screwed in part. And then we're going to start pressing down and moving across this way to move all the gaps and the bubbles out toward the bottom. Okay, so I've got all of my screws into my hurricane hinge here. And I'm just going to start, start pressing. Again, I wish I had a roller, but I don't. But I'm just going to start pressing toward the bottom. because I don't want to have any, any wrinkles or bubbles. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I need to put my side trim on, and it's going to go on about like that. But what I need to do is I need to put a bead of sealant all along there so that if water hits the edge right here, it will run down rather than running underneath. There we go. And again, I'm going to work my way from the top to the bottom. Okay, and there we have it. Got a pretty piece of metal on the outside of this teardrop door now. Okay, so at this point, we are pretty much done uh, skinning the door here. You just want to trim your excess of your caulk off. Um, if you can avoid using a razor blade to do that, avoid it because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to cut through the, the enamel on your, on your aluminum. Um, anyway, just clean that up, and I'm going to start putting this door back together. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step about that because it's pretty much the same as taking it apart. And the next thing we're going to be doing is going back out to the camper and rebuilding where that hatch attached. Okay, so welcome to another ungodly hot day here outside in South Carolina. And this is the day where everything is, is going to start coming back together again. Um, we've got our door put together. I have left the inside panel off because uh, I want to let it rain a couple times on it and see if there's any water leaking in. Um, with that panel off, I'll be able to see that. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much done. And it's time to put the cross member up, put the uh, hurricane hinge on today, and also repair those those spots that were rotted and I'm going to show you right now um, what I'm going to do about those rotted spots uh, since the trailer is aluminum skinned and it's it's adhered on there really good um, 
I only really have the option to repair from the inside, and I'm going to show you how I'm doing that. Do you remember our spot that was rotted up here before? Well, I have it cut out. Um, I have a nice, clean, straight line there. And what I'm going to do, I cut, I cut just a filler piece, which is going to go in there. I can't do it with one hand right now, but it's going to, it's going to go in there. It will line up with the edge there. Um, this, of course, will not be the finished product, but that is just to fill it in and give us some structure. Okay, and then we've got these joiner plates that you can get in Lowe's or, you know, they, come in, they go in the framing section, uh, like for framing houses. And that's going to join those pieces together like that. <clears throat> and then I've got my cross member. It's a piece of oak. It has been cut to length right now. And for the end of that, the way I'm going to join that is that I have, again, another framing piece. And the way this works is that the wood goes in there like that. Um, and then you screw it in. And then that will join up to the side piece and the joiner. And I did modify it just a little bit because it's not made for a two by two piece of oak. And so what I did was I, I bent the edges of it around. Uh, I'll get a little closer there. Come on, right there. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's screwed in on the sides, but then the top is bent around um, to give it just a little more structure. This is super strong. Okay, so we have got um, the brackets put together here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this here, and some of these are temporary screws because i got to do a little bit of fitting for the, um, for the hatch, and I want to make sure I have a little bit of room to wiggle with it, but I've got my, my joiner plate on there, and then up above here, you can see the cross member that I've now got across there, that piece of oak. And I'm ready to start putting a couple of screws in there, and then I'm going to fit the door and see if that fits. And if it does, I'll put the rest of the screws in. If not, I'll make some adjustments. All right, so as you can see, I've got my hurricane hinge dry fitted on there right now. I have only two screws holding it. I don't have any caulk. I don't have any sealant or anything like that. Um, this is just for the fitting, but it fits beautifully on that oak spar. That oak cross member and I am now going to put the door on and see how it closes. Okay. Okay, so probably should lubricate this next time too. Uh, uh there's a problem. Something's not right. Yeah, because look at this. This is not, you have to cut this here. Okay, so I'm back outside again. Obviously, it's later in the day. It just got too hot to work on this anymore. Um, that was a great example of why you fit everything before you put all your caulk and everything on and put all your screws in because obviously I screwed up there. Um, I forgot that I need to cut a notch out to, uh, to allow the door to close past this. And so uh, I'll show you what it looked like here. So when you put your hurricane hinge on, um, you've got, here's the back end, end of the hinge. And this is where your door is supposed to close on this right here. And I needed to cut out a notch for that. I needed to cut out a notch to see the difference there. So there's where the notch is cut. And that's the way it comes. So that extra piece of metal right in here, right in here was not allowing it to close. So I'm cutting this, this side off now, and then I'm going to refit the door again. Okay. And let's let go. Let it go. Okay, so my door is now on. Um, I'm going to go back, take it back off again. I'm going to um, put all of my, my tape or caulk in here, depending on you know, what you want to use. Uh, put all the rest of the screws in that I didn't fill in. You'll probably notice that I, I didn't put all the screws in when I was putting this together, but I wanted to get everything as it needed to be. I'm going to go back and do that, but I'm not going to belabor this video anymore with me showing you how to do that. You already know how. Um, 
Normally this channel is about the traveling aspect of teardrop camping rather than fixing stuff, but since I had to do this, uh, it was an opportunity for all of us to learn together. I don't call myself an expert on teardrop campers, but I have one and I've had to do some repairs on it. And you know, if you've got a better way to do it, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Somebody else can learn. But if you enjoyed this, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We're going to have more videos in the future on traveling, on teardrop camping, on traveling to, you know, seeing authentic things and authentic people and taking photographs and taking video while we're at it, because that is what I do professionally. And um, we'll catch you next time. Feel free to leave comments. Hit the like button if you liked what you saw here. And even if you didn't like it, let us know. And hopefully we can all learn together that way. So thanks so much for watching.